welcome to Connor Grow's Petrified Picture Show. <laughs> I am Crow, and he is Ondor. Obviously, by you know process of elimination. Yeah, I mean you can figure it out. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. This is going to be a good one. Well, sort of. So. Dr. Otto and the Room of the Gloom Beam, which is this episode's brain damage. I mean, it's not a good movie. It's not. I mean, it's it's not in the sense as, as a largely incoherent plot, no real character development to speak of. The special effects, you know, kind of rival early BBC Doctor Who. Oh, but, God. Oh, it really does. They're pretty bad. It's like, <laughs> car, it's like dollar store special effects. It's beautiful. It's like they like ransacked the holiday section at the dollar store. Yeah. Move them onto things. And then, like, steampunked it all. It, I mean, it's kind of great. But so, oh, unlike sure. a lot of the movies we watch, though, that are not good and are also bad, this is actually a really fun movie. I really like Dark Dorado. It's good stuff. Yeah, and it's a sort of a prototype. It's like a prototype for uh, Ernest movies, since sure. Jim Varney is in it. It does have Jim Varney. Wanna... It does have a lot of his early characters that you would see later in the um any of his movies you know uh ernest goes to camp and ernest saves christmas and ernest goes ernest in the army uh ernest it's stupid, scared stupid which we will show at some point yeah uh, well, a clip of it um yeah. but this is still technically speaking not an ernest movie uh in yeah. fact the only part that actually shows the jim Varney's ernest characters the very very tail end of this movie the earnest at the very beginning of this movie, which we will be showing, uh, was actually tacked on uh, when it went to video. Uh, actually, Good Times Home Video, when they released it, uh, requested it be tacked onto it so that they could put his face on the cover so that people would know it's an earnest movie. Yeah. Got to cash in on that earnest money. Apparently, that was a thing. Yeah, early 90s. I mean, earnest was pretty big. Uh, it's kind of weird, though, like, I can only think of two movies that Jim Varney was in. I'm sure he's probably been in others that weren't Ernest movies um, or related to Ernest in some way. Um, like he was in the Beverly, Beverly Hillbillies movie as Jed Clampett. And then he was also in Toy, the first Toy Story movie um, as Slinky, the dog. Um, and I know he died, uh, unfortunately, in the 90s. I, I forget how he died. Um, but just terribly unfortunate because I feel like it was kind of like the his his career started to rise and then it just sort of happened you know he just passed away unexpectedly and he was a uh, he was an American treasure that's for sure. He also starred opposite Hulk Hogan as Lothar Zog in Three Ninjas High Noon at Mega Mountain. So, oh you, man, I haven't in seen case you that missed movie that one forever. Oh yeah 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 and uh, let's see. Yeah, that's that's about it, really. Uh, his last movie would have been Daddy and Them, uh, starring and directed by Billy Bob Thornton. Whoa, I can't even yeah, imagine. I, that would I have been up just to see if it would be worth watching. And I was like, how? What part does he play? Because I don't. It didn't make any sense to me. But uh, that would have been his last movie. Yeah. Yeah. Man, speaking of Three Ninjas, really quick, just briefly, uh, I was talking to the kids about. Three Ninjas the other day because uh, did you ever watch Three Ninjas when they came out in the 90s? Yeah, yeah well, that was like I remember um, their grandfather was it was basically about these three kids and their grandfather was the guy from uh, Big Trouble in Little China the good wizard kind of guy, you know what I mean? Oh, the guy who was yeah, in yeah, Tremors yeah. Um, I also but yes, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Um, but he's their grandpa. And he like teaches. Right back there. He teaches these kids to be ninjas, and they go around beating up bad guys. They mostly just go around kicking people in the groin. That's the main thing because that the, was '90s humor. Yeah. It was the '90s. That was the '80s and late '80s, early '90s. It was all about kicking people in the crotch. That was like the main comedy, you know. Um, but those were like, I don't know. Those movies. I I think. The first two had the original cast in it, and then the one with Hulk Hogan uh, didn't have the same kids. But I know, I remember, I remember Jim Varney being in it now, like him being like the villain 
which is just kind of strange. You know, it's kind of a, a different role for him because he's typically well, not. You will see that in this movie. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Bad Jim Varney. Jim Varney is not the hero of this movie. Oh, man. That's crazy. Yeah. That's okay. You'll really, really hate the hero. Okay, good. I mean, that happens sometimes. I, I think that's. Like sometimes some movies just have a, like a really is it like a situation where it's just a bland hero, or oh, is it just I think slayer? you're meant to hate him. It's one of those kind of things, oh, but he definitely okay. you will hate him. Okay, he good. does a good job good. of being dislikable. Villains are usually way cooler anyway. This guy definitely is. I mean, Doctor Otto. <laughs> He's got a hand on his head, like oh, a hand. That... No, no, not a hand on his head. No, a hand growing out of his head. Oh man, can he like can he poke people with it? Like can he no, can he slap you? No, no, it, it, but it is there. Oh, and there actually is a separate credited actor playing the hand. Oh, okay. So imagine it's not you got your start being Ernest, well, uh, being Jim Barney's hand in Doctor Otto. Like <laughs> if that was your first acting credit. I mean, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. So what do you bring to your new role? Well, I'd like to say that I once played a hand. Well, what if he was like a hand model previously and that he had some experience? Oh, that would also be fantastic. Yeah. Oh, hi, Bart. You know, Vern, your old buddy Ernest has really done it now. Vern, every now and then, a fella comes down the street with lollipop rode all over his face. Well, the old horse trader came out, and it was like taking candy from a baby. Check it out, Vern. All I had to give the guy, Vern, was a mint 58 Chevy and a set of Allen wrenches and, well, some other stuff. He called it a changing coffin. Vern, this is just between you and me now. All you gotta do is jump in this little baby and you can change into anything you want. A general, a pirate, a movie star, or as he said, a master of time and space. He said it just like that, Vern. Just exactly. You wanna go first? Okay, here goes. It's really neat in here, Vern. Uh, Vern, would you mind flipping that little switch there for me? a nice break but now back to the business at hand world domination is a grueling thankless job but someone has to do it please slavery prepare the gloom be yes sir doctor girl yes, sir. Amble, yes, sir, doctor. <laughs> Really? 
This is so much fun. Very soon now, even the smallest household pet will die of slow starving. I am well acquainted with the Gloom Beam Doctor. If it functions as projected, it will soon be an end to the entire world's economy, as we know it. The magnetic Gloom Beam. My most destructive invention. When they activate the device, a magnetic ray will be created. Travel out against the target. It will scramble and erase the magnetic impulses on credit cards, bank accounts, cash register. The economy will collapse. Credit will be gone. Money will be worthless. No one will escape the excruciating pain. Helpless, homeless children will starve in the streets like dogs. But we must be gentle. These are so convenient, you just punch in your number and electronically cash a check. Hello, I'm Speedy Buck. I can take care of all your banking needs. and sparkles. It's wonderful. And it's not only beautiful, really. It's destructive. What is your choice for the target, Doctor? <laughs> Cincinnati, of course. The financial capital of Southern Ohio. Here, Doctor, over to the left. The dilemma we face is unequaled in the history of Cincinnati Bank and Trust. All of the computer tapes in the accounting department have either been erased or scrambled. Checking accounts and deposits vanished. Bank loans lost. We don't know who owes what to whom. It's just a mess. Hodgkins, demonstrate our problem with your display model. Yes, sir. What this illustrates is the global implication of this threat. I will drop this onto one of these rat traps. This cork will represent Cincinnati, which, as you know, has been ravaged by economic disaster unlike anything seen since the Great Depression. Worse, gentlemen, than losing the Super Bowl. Mm. 
While the loss of Cincinnati, in and of itself, is relatively meaningless, the possibility of setting off a series of chain reactions throughout the world is very real and very disturbing. Observe. That about does it. Just put it on the card, will you? You know, I don't know how we got along before the credit card. Next time, use the sales service aisle. <laughs> Round of two. I'll be on the air in a few moments. Make her. Make her. <laughs> Your plan seems to be progressing according to projections, Doctor. You should be most gratified. I will deliver to the world a riddle which may just save mankind. Nah. It's a lie anyway. <laughs> Five, four, Three, two, one, showtime! Good evening. Thanks to the miracle of tissue damaging microwaves, which also cause sterility and cancer, I'm coming to you, the whole world, simultaneously. And what I have for you tonight is a riddle. I love games, don't you? And if you don't answer this riddle correctly, and I believe that you have exactly no chance, it will mean the end of the world as we know it. Doesn't that sound like fun? Okay, Trivia Freaks, you ready? Because I'm only going to say it once, and not very clearly. You ready? When the money is scrambled to the very last cent, Riots and hatred soon Come on, will come in. When all the world's karma will be put in a bind from the evil that lurks where the sun never shines. It is I, Dr. Otto von Schnick, ick, 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 who is plague on you, this trick, ick, ick, ick. But who's Dr. Otto? You may well ponder. While all your magnetic cash is squandered. It's he who had an eye and yet couldn't see. It's he who served bully bays when he was she. It's he who gambled with brains and a gun. It's he who had all and yet had none. And to stop this horrible twisted trick, just exchange the pole. Of all said Nick. And if that doesn't do to save the day, put another quarter in and try another play. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> He's a madman. He's a madman. He obviously has no respect for anything. Human life, social values, the bottom line, nothing. There is one person who can stop this fiend, this paragon of evil. One man with the skill, ingenuity, and cunning to stop this menace to the free enterprise system. A man who has made it his life's work to stop this prophet of doom. Gentlemen, Mr. Lance Sterling, his personal secretary, Doris Talbot. Mr. Sterling, I'm sure that you and uh, Doris are aware of the grave situation we face. The whole financial fiber of this country is at stake. Yes, sir. And you know what they say. As Cincinnati goes, so goes the nation. Gentlemen, our noble institution is on the verge of collapse. Soon no one will be able to afford food or clothing. Riots will break out. 
The wholesale slaughter of cosmetic clerks will begin. The streets will run red with blood from stockbroker suicides. <laughs> and to top it off, our earnings will be down. Don't worry, Mr. Rutherford. I'll solve this twisted riddle and bring this tasteless totalitarian to justice. Put your faith in America's champion. Yes, I know you will, Lance. I have every confidence in your ability to seek out this money-mad fiend wherever he may lurk and to put an end to him and his infernal machine. Do you gentlemen have any questions for Mr. Sterling? Uh, yes. Um, Mr. Sterling, if you could be any animal you wanted, what would it be? Well, now that's a tough one. That is a tough one. If you could be any animal other than the one you are, what animal would you be? That's so. That's such a tough question. You know, I mean, there's so many good animals to pick. Well, that's like, do you that's go for strength? Do you go for speed? Do you go for claws? Bangs? <clears throat> echolocation? I think, you know, I would probably have to go with something that would... I See, my thing is, I don't want, like, speed or anything like that. I just want to be left alone, you know? I don't want things to bother me. So, like, something like a hagfish, you know? Something along those lines. You just make a bunch just of... Just a bottom feeder. Yeah, just... around you, the you bottom know, and eats, like, just, ref, like, refuse. Eating, like, yeah, anything that sinks down. Eating a dead whale carcass. You know, if something tries to bite you, you just create a bunch of slime that gunks up their mouth, you know, and they they strangle to death on it. Something like that. Something that's like more defensive, I think, is what I would I would rather say. That's right. You know. What about you? Well, as a meat suit containing a murder of crows, I think I have to go with crows. I'm, so, I'm obligated to, otherwise they peck their way out, and, and yeah, that just doesn't work. We don't we don't have the budget to contain that. You know, no, 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 we don't. So yeah, we have. It'd be cool if we did, though. Oh, that would be awesome. One day. Yeah, crows are crows are a good choice. A good intelligent animal that can fly, you know, and use tools. I, they've been observed you using. Remember tools. those who have held them and and those who have slighted them as well. Yeah, I, I really like that they get that they like have the capacity for revenge. I think that's pretty cool. Oh, over generations, you piss off yeah. one crow. Oh, you're not just pissing off one. You're pissing off yeah. their entire extended the family bird. over generations. They will remember you. Yeah, they... like that's cool. I like that. I think that's really. I I'm a I'm a big fan of revenge. So like, you know, I I uh, I support that 100. percent But I see what you mean about um, the 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 protagonist being really unlikable. I mean, he's only been oh, on yeah. for yeah. you know a couple minutes. Three and seconds. I already he's already. Him. No. Yeah. Lance I'm going Sterling. to save capitalism. Yeah, what a douche. Like, oh, don't get, yeah, don't get me no, started. No, no, I, so no, far, no. so far, I like everything Dr. Otto's doing. I mean... I know, right? So I'm going to disrupt uh, financial institutions, credit cards will be gone, and banks will be gone, and everything else. And the yeah. only response is that a bunch of, like, bankers are going to jump out windows. And it's like, well... Oh, that'd be a, what a shame. Stockbrokers are going to lose money. It's like, well... I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that would just that would just be the worst, wouldn't it? Oh no, Wall Street is crumbled. Yeah, no, I I'm love. Good, no. All right, I, carry I, on. I'm 100%. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I whatever. Love... Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want the pets to starve, though. He said something about pets starving. I don't he want. He did make a lot of references to pets dying. Yeah, I, I'm not quite as cool with that. Uh, but on the upside, there'll be plenty of bankers and stockbrokers to eat before it gets to that point you know that's true yeah so the that's pets aren't going to starve anytime there. soon they'll be fine right yeah yeah that's true there's just you know pet owners just take your pets out let them feast on the corpses yeah well, you don't have kibbles and bits but you've got uh, entrails it's just as good and it's yeah. it's basically the same thing i mean if you look at the ingredients list on most dog food it's entrails and undis undistinguishable bits. So exactly. nobody's going to really know the difference. It'll be fine. It's all just biome. It's just, it's just you know, biomass of some kind. Weird jiggly bits put into a, like, meat-flavored sauce. Right. 
exactly probably a metaphor for something if i was the kind of person who you know indulged in metaphors yeah what's a metaphor isn't there a joke that's like it's like a meta is for whatever you know what i mean just no something like oh tough crowd yeah. <laughs> but anyway I yeah um no I, I actually really like the um all of all of the like glowing uh, oh, the, uh the hand-drawn thing. special effects I, and i love that it's yeah. all very like uh like peewee herman's playhouse oh yeah all kind of sure. feels uh but made on a so dollar fun. store budget yeah and i like the i like his his uh hench ladies and i like his robot i mean i think oh, he's Willie a pretty the robot he's a pretty you stylish if you will the story. robot's lifelike movements it's a pill to understand spoken commands and a vocabulary of nearly 700 words, such as attack, Willie, search and destroy. Tora, tora, tora. <laughs> are those are those fla- uh, plants attached to his costume? What are those? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've never got to the dinosaur. They're like the little um fake, fake oh, plants. Like the fake... plant, but yeah, it's it's plants. Literally, like you can find now. I could. Drive yeah. up to the dollar store and find those plants. They used them to like make wreaths and stuff. Yeah, that would be a really cool like costume for Halloween or something. Actually, it's literally, like... you need a bunch of stuff randomly pulled from the like home, not gardening, the uh, like craft and garden section, and a yeah. hot glue gun. Yeah. Uh, well, also you need somebody to follow you around. Yeah. See, someone wearing just like one of those um, body suits that has yeah, like the be wearing all black. Suit. It's all black. Committed to like uh, hanging from your back all night. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, ideally, I don't know, maybe a child. A child could pull it up. Yeah. I mean, you need somebody you could actually carry while you're carrying out whatever you're doing. I can just strap one of my children to my back and have them do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what else? Why else do kids exist? I don't know. Exactly. To do your bidding. I mean, children are the ultimate hit. Yeah. Because they're too small to resist, you know, very effectively. I mean, who wouldn't want to just hang there again? Yeah, they can be vicious, though, sometimes. If you got to be careful, you got to. That's why you got to spray them with the hose occasionally. Well, you yeah. got to strap them in well before you, you know, yeah. give them access to your face. As long as they don't get angry and claw at your scalp. That's why you have to occasionally give them some candy, give them a little piece of candy, and then they pull it back into the, you know. I mean, that seems into the harness that, 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 That's yeah. a fair bargain. I, I mean, I would accept yeah. that answer. Yeah. yeah. I think that that's a it's a mutualism, you know. All right, well, let's get back to this wild Onward. ride, so you can learn more reasons to hate Lance. There are lots. Yes. It's who? Mister Lance, cutesy but he never gets poop on his shoes, Charlie. <laughs> He's cute. He's cute, like the plague, like boils. That persistent itching. You can save my day anytime. Mm-hmm. Mr. Clean Room never bought clear as hill crosses at the box, Sterling. You pea brained incompetent. Let me tell you a little story. Once upon a time, there were two little boys born in the same town on the same day. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Sterling. Little Lance is the favorite of the whole hospital. All the nurses are just in love with him. He's so cute. Oh. He's got his mother's eyes. Oh, but he's got your dimples. <laughs> Hello, mother. Hello, father. I'm so glad you're my parents. Oh, he's got your manners. <sighs> I have terrible news for you. It Oh, 
hideous. Oh, now I can begin to unravel life's mysteries for myself. Gag me, Miss Shut. This is the best Christmas ever. And you're the best parents anyone could ever have. I've got something for you. Open it. Lance, you make me so proud. I wonder what it could be. It's the White House. I made it out of toothpicks in my spare time. Oh, Lance, it's beautiful. Someday, I'm going to be a senator. And I'm going to make the world a better place for all people. Put it there, son. When I go up, I'm going to be a senator and make the world a better place for everyone. It's enough to make you blow your beats in the snow. Father, can we say it just once? Since it's Christmas. Dad? Sure, son. Since it's Christmas. Uh, I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America, America. and to the republic for which it stands. I hate Christmas. Holidays were not looked forward to in my happy little home with my mommy and daddy dearest. <laughs> Maybe he won't come back. Maybe he's run away. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can always hope. It's all we've got. <laughs> but he did get us a Christmas present this year. What a surprise. The only thing I ever got from him before was nightmares. Well, let's open it. Maybe we should wait until he's here. No. <laughs> Maybe we could sell it before he comes back. <laughs> All right. Let's see what little Otto got for his loving parents. times and I still don't understand it. Now there's a surprise. Yeah, I'm usually really good at parlor games. Well, maybe Dr. Otto doesn't want to be found. <laughs> don't be ridiculous, Doris. What good would it do to have a riddle so hard no one could solve it? You're a smart girl, Doris, but uh, uh, sometimes you just don't think. <sighs> Did you bring the cooler? Could use a cold drink. The world is on the brink of chaos. We're trying to save it. <laughs> Somehow the cooler slipped my mind. That's what I mean, Doris. Sometimes you just don't think. <laughs> Goodbye. Akron? I'd like to hit him twice like that. He who had an eye but could not see. Do you suppose that could be Mr. Potato Head? Uh, it doesn't feel right, Lance. Well, what do you think of me? Well, I don't know. So, it could be Mr. Potato Head. Yes, Lance, I suppose it could. I thought so. So oh, you think you will stop me? You think I'll just roll over and play dead? Oh, please, Mr. Stanley, don't hurt me. 
I want to do better. I, I, I want to be good like you. Gee, thanks, Doc. Quick, Willie. More destruction. More carnage. It's, it's my lowest moment. It's all so, so deliciously unclean. It is he who served Bully Bays when he was a she. Bully Bays. Uh, it originated on the coast of France. I knew that. As you well know, I'm a, I'm a gourmet cook. It shows. There is not an ounce of fat on my body. I'm on the metric system. And now for Mr. Perk. Quick, really, into the changing coffin. We have work to do. Ah, the changing coffin is your favorite toy, Doctor. Today, we will transform you into a Martek, a soldier of fortune, and a socially unacceptable mercenary. Oh, this device goes way beyond your old Halloween makeup kit and actually transforms your features, transmortifies your speech, and gives you a natty change of clothes all at the same time. And hold on to your RNA, Doctor. This is your supreme commander. Have you spotted them him? yet? Oh, good. Then we can start to. Spring. No, a trap. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> uh, do you have any idea where we are? <sighs> Oopsie. Car trouble. Doris, did you bring your AAA card? Lance, I don't think this is covered. Well, let's find a phone and call a service station. We will ruin these rims driving on flat tires. Youngsters look like they're having themselves the time of their lives. Physical training, especially when started young, it means so much to a healthy, well-balanced life. Lance! Come back here! I'd love to, Doris, but duty calls. You know that. I've got to find a phone, fix the car, save the world, that kind of thing, huh? like a police escort. Is there a phone around here? Good form. Feet apart, hands low, thrust and withdraw. Somebody deserves a lot of credit for teaching the fundamentals here, and I certainly look forward to meeting them. That ruddy fool. I can't believe he just strolled into camp. Doesn't he know every shop troop in the free world is looking for that... Kami. Scum. Sir, my databanks indicate that Mr. Sterling has been politically inactive since his unsuccessful senator. Don't you ruddy interrupt me, you ruddy liberal wimpy piece of ruddy tin, you what? Yes, sir, doctor. Well, ladies, let's go meet this... Red. ...terrorist that calls himself Mr. Lance Sterling, eh? You know... When I was about your age, my dad gave me a BB gun. But the barrels should always point up for safety's sake. These are really wonderfully trained youngsters. I'm impressed. Come 
time to challenge me face to face, have you, Mr. Lance Sterlinski, or whatever you call you? Ready. Self now, I want. Uh, no. We just want to use your phone. See, we had car trouble, and, well, my AAA is you expired. You won't be using your... Ready. Three-letter code words to your... Ready. Tommy, comrades in the bus, what? <laughs> no, 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 not that. No, we were driving, see, trying to figure out this riddle. Pull up this. Ready. Tommy, come in the... Guest. Room over there. We'll play a few little games with it. Ready. Red rumps. What? What? <laughs> this does not look like a phone booth. Now, phone booth has those glass panels, the little metal things, a shelf right here. Yeah, and a lot more private. Oh, what are you doing? How can you touch those things? I'm looking for something to help us get out of here. Well, whatever they had didn't help them much. Now, look, Doris. They're gonna be expecting us to break soon, to snap under the pressure. But we are tougher than that. We're Americans. Let's keep our morale high. Hey, I know. How about a song? If I were a carpenter and you were a lady, would you marry me anyway? Would you have my baby? And now for the economic news. Back to you, Mike. Mr. Rutherford, Mr. Rutherford, the entire city has erupted. People are going crazy. The whole country's in an uproar. Mobs are storming all the banks, burning their checkbooks in protest. They want their money, and everything is scrambled up. This Dr. Otto von Schnick, ick, ick, has reshuffled the deck. And Lance Sterling is nowhere to be found. Cut him down. Auto or hard tack, wouldn't you to play a little spin the barrel? Oh boy, Doris, I love to play games. Comrade, you decided to take me up on my little invitation, huh? I should get to go first. She always goes first. She always gets to order first in the restaurants. She always gets the window seat on the plane. Now I want to go first. Oh, by all means. Go on. 
on, Trotsky. Drop the hammer. Do it. that Jim Barney got his starts, but uh, when he was eight. Uh, his first role is actually as Puck in a regional production of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. Oh, yeah. Hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, from there, he went on to New York City where he worked as a stand-up comedian and acted in Dinner Theater Off-Broadway. Hmm. So he's actually a classically trained actor, despite the fact that he's best known for, you know, Ernest. Well, I, I mean, I think you can kind of tell, though, like he like he's very. He he definitely puts himself completely into every character that he plays like he's oh, he just he, oh, yeah, 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 and he he just chews up the scenery. I mean, like very he's so, so good. I mean, he definitely gives me like um, sort of like Robin Williams vibes, like there's aspects of of him that I see like. And I've seen in other people too that like end up being like really big, huge, yeah. you know, actors. And I think that, like I said earlier, I mean, I I feel like he really could have been like that. You know, he could have been this larger than life actor. And you know, and then just unfortunately, his life was cut short. It's very sad. Consider there were a whole lot of Zer Ernest movies. Uh, when I was doing the research yeah, for this, true. there was a ton of movies I'd never heard of. Like Ernest goes to Africa. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. I still don't, I don't know that's a thing. That. I don't think I've yeah, seen that. He one. did. There were like, I don't know, ten Ernest movies. There's a ton of them. Yeah. So I mean, he was fairly prolific within that one particular microcosm. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it worked. He made it work for him. Yeah, for sure. And you could definitely see some echoes of his later movies after this one. I mean, the uh, Child Soldiers. Ernest goes to camp. I yeah, don't know. that's true. Yeah. No. Yeah, oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, he, he does kind of um, uh, radicalize them because I remember I have all those turtles descending on parachutes onto the onto the loggers and they're biting them in the face and everything else. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I definitely yeah. say that too. Yeah, you can and see yeah, also Australian... later movies coming from this one, uh, yeah. but uh, it sort of explains them with his changing closet rather than Ernest just being this guy who's either has multiple personality disorder or. He just carries around a bunch of costumes and just changes into these people for no discernible reason. Yeah. This movie gives a concrete reason for those costume and personality changes, which is kind of cool. I wonder I wonder if in the 90s, uh, I wonder if Jim, uh, Jim Barney tried out to be in The Mask. I you know what? Before... That whole... Uh... Yeah, like, I can very... imagine... I mean... 
I can see it. I could see, like, I mean, I don't know about him being, like, I don't know, having, like, Cameron Diaz as a love interest. I, I, I mean, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I would have watched it. I would have watched I it. Too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Um, although, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's one of those things where um, it's like a, a thing I've heard people do where they'll be like, this actor could do this role of, you know, right. but they couldn't do, or they could do this character, this, like, well-known character, but that actor who played that character couldn't do this, you know. It's kind of like, whereas, like, I don't know, I, I think that, like, if in a weird, bizarro universe, if Jim Carrey and Jim Varney had switched roles, I, I mean, I can imagine, I can imagine Jim Carrey as, like, an earnest kind of character. I mean, I think he's got, Honestly, he's got kind of those, that sort of, like, he's a, like a kind of a shapeshifter, too, you know what right. I mean? May, so so maybe those, it, those sort of uh, plastic y sort of phases. That's, yeah, that's an sure. inherent, Very you know, part of their, uh, and, yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Man, just imagine another world. It'd be crazy, you know? I mean, imagine, like, imagine Jim Varney having, like, growing a huge beard and, like, okay. going crazy. Going wild at the, well, I would say like losing this, like saying all kinds of bizarre stuff at the red carpet, like Jim Carrey did a few years ago. Oh. But, but yeah, I really want to imagine, I really would like to imagine, I'd like to see, like, maybe through AI art or something, someone should type in as a prompt, uh, Jim Varney uh, as the mask. Jim Varney yeah. as the mask. Yeah. It's doable. Yeah. Which, by the way, um, the mask comic book, just a little aside for a moment is so different than like the movie it's like actually a lot darker it's a lot more violent uh because it shows kind of like all the possibilities of like a person who has like cartoon abilities and what that would mean in the real world and what it really what would really happen if you hit someone with a giant mallet and you know their head explodes <laughs> you know Gallagher um, style yeah and, and the mask yeah. character is not really like a superhero he's more of like an anti-hero slash villain sort of really because like and there's multiple people who put on the mask throughout right like i think like the first stan stanley ipkiss is like the first person and i think he puts it on then he like dies and then like other people throughout the series you know put it it's on it's supposed to be a um sort of trickster manifestation right yeah mm -hmm. uh, just they yeah. the mask is just meant to uh bring out sort of chaos yeah absolutely yeah and it sort of like takes the person's like id and and enhances that. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. I just I'm in love with the idea of of an earnest mask. Jim to... Varney as the mask. Yeah. I just it's stuck in it's stuck in my head now. I can't get that image out. It'd be interesting. Would be. And as he's like doing different things, he just turns into all the different earnest characters, you know, like Oh. Like he turns into like the Roman general. He has a sword yeah. and like you know slashes somebody or whatever, or the old woman. And you know, I don't know. Does he turn in? Well, I guess we'll. I guess we'll see. I don't want to we'll give any spoilers. It. Yeah. in the relationship between man and machine. That's all, weenie. Big show the foundry, Billy. Very educated work. girls. Proud of Did you paint that yourself? Yes. And what have you done for the fair lamps? What I have done for my science fair project, Miss Apple, is to try and give our students an opportunity to see what it feels like to exercise our most sacred right, the right to vote. 
I believe, Miss Apple, and honored judge, that each and every one of us has a duty to take a stand whenever the opportunity arises. As a proud American, one who truly loves his country, I wanted to make the light of liberty shine. Now. Oh, also, real oh, quick, nope. no, I no. want to give a shout out to the guy um, at the big towards the beginning who was like, "I don't know what we do without what we what we did without credit cards." Uh, that right. really skinny um, man who didn't really see, he didn't look like he had any teeth. Um, he is actually in a lot of Ernest movies. His, I think his, the character's name is Bobby, and he never. Oh, but yeah, his, yeah, yeah. But he doesn't yeah, talk in the Ernest movies. No. and he's the counterpart to that more rotund guy and they're usually right. like kind of wheelers and dealers kind of like uh because i remember in um in ernest scared stupid they have all they start selling all this like anti-troll like troll spray and then troll traps and stuff like that and i think in ernest and, and ernest um uh saves christmas i'm pretty sure that he like they do some sort of like they sell some like reindeer different like gadgets and stuff like that that right. capture reindeer and things like that so like I, I they're always in an earnest movie as some sort of like they're a huckster sort of you know they're always trying to sell i some saw sort him of i didn't see the other guy so yeah it'll be might, interesting i'll we'll keep an eye out for him maybe he just came along later but yeah maybe he is maybe he is like yeah, some other background be. character in this who knows yeah we'll keep our eyes peeled It is not what your country can do for you. It is what you can do for your country. Oh, Lance. So, Miss Apple, will you be the first to cast your vote for the freedom of choice? Why, of course, Lance. And ask not what you can do for your robot. Ask what your robot can do for you. Come on, Willie. Really. Let's play. Then let's violin. Hello, I'm your new D9 voice activated robot. I can walk and talk like a real person. I can perform a complex function. Sayonara, book through the ages. <laughs> Not the pork. I'm happy now. Little children in China don't get pork. <laughs> That auto has no respect for anything. Look what he's doing to Janie Newsom's project. Your project next. Watch it. Watch that. Notice, if you will, the robot's lifelike movement, its ability to understand spoken commands, and the vocabulary of nearly 700 words, such as. Attack, Willie! Search and destroy! Dora, Dora, Dora! <laughs> really is a most impressive experiment. Well, I hope this won't sway your judgment. After all, if I know Otto, he's found a way to cheat. And besides, he has no school spirit. Otto, you stop this! You tell this thing to behave! And now, let's exercise our most sacred right. Let's vote and vote and vote. La 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 la. One machine, la, one la. vote. I just pulled the lever in this air. Lance, this booth may have been a good idea, but it needs a lot of work to make it safe. But it don't play with me, Miss Apple. It was auto. Don't blame others for your mistakes, especially those less fortunate. La 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 the human scum of the earth. I found them, Exalted One. They're in the deep woods. Good. We have yet another chance to finish that imbecile. Oh, life is good. 
Quick, into the changing coffin. We haven't a moment to lose. Heaven's name, are they doing to that young lady? Uh, well, me proud, beauty. Maybe a taste of the whip will make you like your face. No. <laughs> I still don't like it. Wait just a minute. If this is your idea of some elaborate sorority initiation, I think it's gotten a little out of hand. Don't look now, Polly. Let me think some fresh bait just swam into me bucket. Now, I cannot believe that this young lady voluntarily participates in this type of shenanigans. Now, fun is fun, but this is going too far. So you think me lads have gone a bit too far? Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not Jim, it's Lance. Lance Sterling. And... Well, yes, I do think this barbaric ceremony must come to a stop. Don't you agree, Doris? Um, um, uh, See, Dad? We all agree. You'll not be interrupting me chances of catching the dump now, would you, Jim? Uh, the, the dump? Ah, uh, the dump, Jim. The dump. Bring him along. Hey, 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 hey. Soft, but perishable. This is not my idea of hospitality. Now, a friend in need is a friend indeed. I'm sure you'll agree with that, Mr. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, now that we're all here, how about a game? How about a riddle? Okay, now, now, I'll go first, and you see if you can solve it. I tell you what, I've got it written down right in my pocket. If you just get it for me, I would really appreciate What's it. this? Yeah. Oh, no, no, a little more to the right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You got... Okay. Uh, can you open it up for me? Okay. What has an eye but cannot see? Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> he rises! I caught you now, you lurking garbage bag. The dump! That dump dies tonight! Are we late? Are we missing? Don't friends? look, Jim. It seems we be a mite late. You know, Jim, me thinks the dump would take a shine into you. Huh? Aye, that he would. He likes young boys like you, Jim. Oh. That he does. Because you're so young and pink and educated. You wouldn't dare! You needs to be helping your old mate Laughing Jack O'Cockney have his revenge on that foul-smelling dump that ruined me good eye. Well, I... I under the circumstances, I... No, Lance, no. It would be good for you, Jim. Huh? I that it would. Yeah, what? 
And what would we have for him, Johnny? It's a Cabana side-by-side -side freezer! This Cabana holds up to 40 pounds of fruits and vegetables and has a convenient ice maker and water tap. All from Cabana if you help Laughing Jack catch the dump. Back to you, Jack. Oh, I'm just overwhelmed. But, I don't, I don't know, my apartment's too small and, well... We'll never help you no matter what. Doris, the side-by-side -side freezer, we'd be fools not to try. you, Alex? Rudy. <laughs> well, I, I go by Lance now. Rudy, long time no see. Rudy? Yeah, 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 Rudy. How's it been going, Alex? Uh, How's the wife? Fine. Uh, and, and the kids? Okay. Oh, great. Alex, how about getting us loose? Piece of cake. Thing. Uh, once upon a time, a long time ago, uh, I pulled a thorn out of his paw when he was just a baggie. <laughs> Goodbye, stupid Ben. You're safe, stupid Ben. $2.33. Okay, do you have any coupons? Okay. Total is $3,298,637.23. I'll take back the pork chops. <laughs> Dollar collapses. Pound collapses. Frank collapses. Frank! The true dimensions of the economic catastrophe the entire world is experiencing will not be known for some time. What is known is that today the Soviet Union declared an end to the use of the ruble as its national currency and declared boiled turnips to be the new coin of the realm. In Denmark, the national sport of cheese wrestling was suspended indefinitely when the price of a single small gouda rose to 150,000 kalotniks. Since we are trapped in a diagonal plummet, we are either traveling northwest or southeast. So, if we knew where we were... Which we don't. We could get back to civilization and put an end to Otto and all his shenanigans. Oh. Oh. Thanks there, Alex. Uh, watch that slip disc, everybody. Listen, it is great to catch up on old times. With you, too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, lunch next week, okay? Sure. Same meeting place as always? Certainly. Good. Okay. Now, before you go, and I know you gotta go, let me read you something. Okay. To stop this horrible, twisted trick, just exchange the poles of old St. Nick. Mean anything to you? Doesn't Santa live at the North Pole with all the elves and everything? Huh? Don't you think? Ah, <laughs> oh, so you think that the pole of old St. Nick is the North Pole? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Listen. Great to see you again. Good seeing you. Lunch next week. Same meeting place as always? Of course. Good. Okay, say hi to the wife and kids for me. I will. And take care of yourself. Okay. All right. Ciao. What a prince. He's so resourceful. 
He is an idiot of global proportions. But at least my master plan for world conquest is coming along nicely. I still don't understand it all. Well, here, Tina, let me show you. You see this little object, no larger than your fingernail? Mm -hmm. Observe. Oh, I see, Doctor. By starting the blocks, you set up a chain reaction which puts pressure on world commodity markets, which in effect readjusts the annual circulation rate of liquid accounts into the liability column. And the Federal Reserve will have to devaluate currency in a futile attempt to cope. In Washington, D.C., the food riots continued, and in New York City, looters rampaged through that city's financial district, tarring and feathering some two dozen bankers and brokers. And now we return to Love in the Afternoon. <laughs> Sir, I've been running this through our Centauri Systems XY computer, and it seems to have come up with an interesting twist on all this. Centauri's conclusion is that this Dr. Otto von Schnick, ick, ick, is only a menace because we do not control him. If we could persuade von Schnick to be on the board of the bank, or perhaps partners with the bank, we could control the world. Ooh. Well, thank you, sir. Well, better. What's wrong with you guys in intelligence? Why don't you do something about all this? We've prepared some new scenarios. The Bay of Pigs? It could have worked. And those wonderful Vietnam reports. Do you see a light at the end of this tunnel? What? Bureaucrat. The economy has gone to hell in a handbasket. You guys have to come. We formulated a psychological profile on this Russian character. I'm sure it's a breakthrough. You want the password? Huh? Green cheese is a mouse's only friend. Mr. President. The economy of this country is on the verge of collapse. Don't you think I know that? Sir, all of the government accounting computers have been wiped clean. The Treasury Department has no idea how much money is being printed. And what's worse, most of the senator's expense accounts have vanished from our records. You mean to tell me we have no idea how much money this country owes or who owes us? That's correct, sir. So, in effect, the national debt is wiped out. You could say that. That's great! Call the press conference. I'm tracking them. They're approaching the cliff. Oh! 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 Otto! What are you going to do? Tempt the idiot. You're him to the doom. They will help me. And so will you. I'll lead him to his destruction and crush him like a ripe grape. <laughs> I, I hope I'm not out of line. I'm hungry. Oh, this place is full of mosquitoes. Where are we going, anyway? You're supposed to be the leader. Well, I can't do everything. My training is in making command decisions, motivating large numbers of stalwart troops, giving pep talks, that sort of thing. But I'm hungry. I can catch fish. I can use this little thorn for a hook. And, and I can unravel some thread from, from my sweater for line. Oh, and I can use this little gum wrapper for a lure. Boy, this is fun.
to find an easier path. Oh, boy, that's typical, Doris. Typical of too many women who try to make their way into the real world. They crumble the first sign of trouble. today and then for that debate you saved me you were never in any real trouble fear is a phantom that clouds the mind i love it when you talk metaphysical <laughs> oh great Food at last. You know, my blood sugar is at an all time. Oh my God. He really sucks. Oh, he's a terrible, terrible, terrible human being. I like Doris, though. She's a woman of action. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just climb up that, you know, climb up the side of the mountain. It's going to be really hard, and you're fine. Do that thing. I'm going to run around and actually save her. So, Forget yeah. Her. I love, I love that he had to pre- oh, use the grappling hook to hang on to the door. Yeah. Down. Also, like, 
the idea that it's a door at all is, is pretty hilarious. And it, it basically just exists for that scene where he opens the door. And I mean, it's just, it's, it's great. This movie is actually pretty great, honestly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I love the trash monster, the dump, the trash monster. Yeah. Inexplicably, the trash monster. Rescued him with a uh, plastic bag, and he's grown since then as a family yeah. now. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. It's so silly. But uh, this movie, I don't know. I, I'd never heard of it until we had discussed it. You know, I, I, don't, I don't ever remember seeing it in a video store or anything when I was younger. No. Uh, the first time I heard of it, uh, a friend of mine from uh, undergrad uh, talked about it. He really loved it, and he watches kind of obscure movies like we do. And then yeah. I think I saw it on either Tubi or YouTube or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty great. It's pretty interesting. Well, I don't mean it's not great, but it's Again, interesting. Yeah, it's not a good movie. It right. is a fun movie. That's the recurring theme. Yeah. You know, it is. most of these movies are yeah. are are fun but not at least fun but, yeah um so i just want to say that i love a pirate with an iguana on the hat i think that was a great that was a great touch you don't usually see a pirate with an animal besides a parrot maybe a monkey maybe a or a tiny monkey are the classic choices yes. yeah but an iguana i think is a good choice i mean it would be seafaring as well there's marine iguanas yeah, and iguanas can be mean. Iguanas can be really mean. You know? Oh, they can be. I briefly they owned an iguana. Yeah, those those teeth and those claws, that tail. I mean, they could do some damage. Yeah. Oh yeah, they'll whip you. Yeah, for sure. I knew someone who who had a friend whose cat, or I mean, whose iguana killed their cat. So that's pretty. Oh, wow. I mean, that's pretty gnarly. I mean, in a 1v1, I would think that a cat would, you know, at least be somewhat capable of taking on an iguana. But then again, I mean, I guess if it were a young cat or, I mean, or if the iguana, I think if the iguana strikes first, you know. Well, it's it's right. basically covered in armor and then it's got that whip tail. Yeah. And yeah. Claws. Yeah. It's got one more natural weapon than the cat does. The cat has the teeth and claws. The iguana has the teeth and claws and a whip tail. I mean, you know. And the armor. Yeah, and the armor. armor, so yep. I mean, it makes sense actually yeah. if you if you break it down like that. But anyway, um, Sterling, I I just really want something bad to happen to him at the end of this movie, but I feel like it's not going to happen. It's PG thirteen, so nothing yeah, terribly that's too bad. bad. Yeah, that's too bad. I was really hoping that he would fall into the water. Oh, do well. Never mind. I keep wanting to ask spoilers. Because yep, um, yep, I'm curious spoilers. about the thing in the water. Do we ever yep. find out what the thing in the water is? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, another question. When are we going to talk a little bit about uh, Ernest Scared Stupid? The greatest as Ernest movie of all time. As soon as you want to do that, I will click on the button to show that. Okay. Do we want to do it now? What about now? What about now? We're doing it now? Let's do it now. Is it now? now. Is, is now, now the time I'm doing that thing? Yes. Now, yes, okay. because it is the greatest, it is the most wonderful, earnest movie of all time. It has Eartha Kitt in it as a crazy, yes. well, she's not really crazy. As, as oh, no, 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 she's the most sensible individual in that town. And she has a flamethrower, which I wish she would, has I wish she got to use on the trolls. I wish she used yeah. it on the trolls. But, uh, but yes, it's, it's a cinematic masterpiece. And I'm not saying that ironically, I really love Ernest Scared Stupid. Um, oh, I know plenty of adults who've seen it who are legitimately scared of this movie. And it is a kid's movie. I mean, it's right. no more like rated R than this movie. It's, yeah. it's not. It's still PG, I think PG-13. But yeah, adults but, still scared to watch it. Well, I mean, it had really good um, practical effects. I mean, some of the effects are not great. But like, the, as for the trolls, like the troll costumes and stuff oh, yeah. are pretty unnerving. Um, and it has some scary moments. Like it has some like, you know, creepy moments for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, well, just the kids getting their life sucked out. Yeah, yeah, and turned into a little wooden doll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's pretty great. Um, but yeah. It, anyway, we should All definitely right, so, just. Yeah, I'm going to show the clip, so and then good. we can talk about it again after that. And here we go. We 
We'd nothing to fear but fear itself. Plus, the known fact that old lady Hackmore will turn us into a couple of drooling, red-eyed zombies if she catches us here. Well, nobody home. I guess they're out robbing graves or biting my heads off chickens or whatever's in voodoo vogue. For my property? What are you doing here? Ma'am, I'm just here to pick up all this garbage. Got no garbage here. Only the expressions of the soul. Uh, Ma'am, I'm an official representative of the Briarville City Government, and incidentally, a close personal friend of Mayor Murdoch's. Aren't you that Warrill kid? Yes, ma'am. <gasps> oh, you will bring down the curse on us all. Woe to you, oh, you see the Warrill. Get out of here and don't come back. I wish you'd reconsider. Oh. Recycling is a very important part of good citizenship. <sighs> And you'll be a dead citizen when the poisons of the evil causes through the portals and channels of your body you will lie a quivering toxic mass of screaming flesh they would have to load you and the rest of this backward town on a meat wagon with a pitchfork so in other words it might be better if i came back another day ah! <laughs> and there you have it folks Oh, it's so good. Oh, my God. It's so good. And how they got Eartha Kitt to do this, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, she's done a few of those roles. I mean, she basically played that same sort of character in uh, Emperor's New Groove. Well, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, like, as far as, box, like, she's a big deal box, and, box, and, box, and then smash you with that hammer! <laughs> oh, I love Eartha Kitt. As so a flamethrower, so you know, yeah. Yeah, she was so great. What an oh, excellent, excellent actress. Yeah. Oh, my God. And yeah, and, and she's just one of many things that make up the greatness in that movie. Um, yeah, Old Lady Hackmore. I love, I love that. I love her. She's so great. <laughs> <laughs> and I love her just scrap metal art. It's so cool. She's an interesting old lady that lives out in the, in the junkyard and makes all kinds of cool sculptures and and she She's really and she knows bloodline to screw everyone yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah she knows about the ancestral curse and nobody believes her yep. except for the kid i mean the kids do but or the little boy does yeah. but anyway i don't want to but they also Ernest believe in earnest in doing Ernest. earnest things so yeah. you know they're not really credible yeah that's true but anyway, i also people really should love... go see that movie Go totally see that movie. Yes, if you could yes. find that movie. Actually, it is really hard to legitimately find that movie. We have a DVD of it that I think I got it when... I'm pretty sure I bought it back when uh, the Blockbuster here went out of business like a decade ago. You know, um, They were selling off all the movies. And I'm pretty sure that's where I got it. I've had it ever since. But, uh, but no, I, I have really fond memories of being a kid in Kentucky and going to this fried chicken restaurant slash movie store called John's Chicken Shack that's in Scott that was in Scottsville, Kentucky. It's up there now. Now it's a I think now it's a Chinese restaurant. Um, but my grandparents would always take me in there and I would always we'd always get chicken and we'd get my like I would get a movie and my sister would get a movie. We'd rent movies and I I used to rent that like we used to rent that one just repeatedly. Um, but I think that intro song too is really good. Uh, it's a pretty, uh, um, and it shows all those clips from all kinds of different B movies. Yeah. Uh, it's got kind of like a funky beat, you know, it's pretty good. It's uh, just, I don't know. It, it, anyway, that sounds, that sounds like a that one, that one character in all the Rob Zombie movies, Captain Spaulding. You know yeah, yeah, it's, it sounds no, like something I, Captain Spaulding would be yeah, on. No, it, it legitimately, it was a legitimate. Place. Yeah, like I didn't, it, movie. That, that was the stick from that from the Rob Zombie movie, wasn't it? Yeah, Captain well, Spaulding? well, it was a well, his. Well, oh, no, it was a haunted movie. house. Yeah, it was a haunted house slash okay. chicken restaurant slash yeah. gas station. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, right. kind of similar. There, there, but there, you know, there used to be all kinds of places like that, like really, really, um, just sort of unique little establishments that sold thing weird combinations of things like that. 
And, you know, you don't see that very much anymore. Everything, it's like most things are much more specialized or um, either that or, you know, you just buy things online. But, like, right. I mean, that that's also in Kentucky. Uh, and, and I think it was, around, it was around Bailey's Point, which this is all, the area that I'm describing is, like, it's um, Scottsville, Bowling Green, Glasgow, all in that area. There used to be this place um, by Bailey's Point called J and L's, and it was a bait shop slash fried chicken place. Um, yeah. But I used to love going there too. They had like the most amazing potato wedges. It was great. We'd always go there before we would go like boating and stuff when I was a kid. Um, but yeah, you don't see a lot of places like that anymore, unfortunately. I think that's really too bad. You know, All right, just so little, whenever, little... Uh, win the lottery or you know conquer the world. I'm bringing back obscure roads and attractions. It's on my list of things. So that moron of morality has taken our bait. Mr. Honest Buck or nothing's turning. You won't get away this time. Get out of my way, you nip. To the changing coffin. The chicken was good, but on a balanced diet is important. Bird can't fly on a broken wing, as my mother always said. <laughs> You like some sweet repose. Repose means sleep. I knew that. I got excellent scores on the verbal part of my SATs. And I always did well in English. The math part always got me, though. Me too. I never understood any of that stuff. Quantum theory, astrophysics, binary trigonomics. Me, me, you're so dumb. Well, we have something in common. Uh, Doris? Uh, Doris. Now we need to stay together, okay? Well, it looks like we're on the right path after all. I could use a hot bath and something to eat. Boy, me too. You don't think this is some sort of trick, do you, Doris? Well, why would I think that? We're miles from civilization, in the middle of an impenetrable forest, following the only path anywhere, and watching anti-Nelda signs pop out of nowhere. Why would I think this was a trick? Good. It felt all right to me, too. Work, work, work. That's all I do. I hire a domestic. It's like adopting a child. He creates work for me. I ask him to do a few simple tasks. Water the flowers. What happens? I end up watering the flowers. Well, you little darling, you blow me. Here. I hope you strangle on it. You're lucky to get it. Little flowers in China don't even get water. Hello, travelers. Boy, this is our lucky day. She seems real nice. Welcome to Auntie Nelson. Boy, right this is our lucky day. She seems real nice. We're going to have a we don't have a chance. We're going to meet lots of nice young people. <laughs> Someone's in the kitchen, they it's weird. Maybe someone's in the kitchen, I know where I'm at. Come on, sock it, head. They're waiting to eat. Booyah bays cannot be hurried, Doctor. Now, battery breath, now! It really needs a few more minutes, Doctor, for the ingredients to marry their essences. 
Now, all of a sudden, I've got a Julia Child to deal with. But, 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 Doctor, I, I, oh, 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 oh not liquefy, Doctor. Oh, 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 oh. This is no trick. And what would make me think this was a trick? All right, Miss Grump, just be that way. She'll feel much better after a hot meal and some sleep. So will I. So pick up those fingers there, Bolthead, and mop up the rest of that oil. Please forgive any disturbance. I don't suppose I have to tell you how hard it is to find suitable help nowadays. I know just what you mean. It smells yummy. I am starved. Oh, me too. It's from an old family recipe. Um, aren't you eating? No, dear. I'm on a water diet. Well, I hope you're taking a vitamin supplement. I try to take care of myself. My son, Jaime, he never took care of himself. He didn't weigh 90 pounds soaked in paving tar. Well, I'm famished. What's in this, anyway? Oh, just some fresh herbs and things from the garden. Bonjour. This is the incompetent I mentioned earlier. Why the mademoiselle? Please. I hope it's cold duck. You would. And you, madam? Uh, none for me, thanks. It's an excellent year. It's audacious and yet endearingly understated. Well, I, I usually don't drink, but, well, tonight feels special. Uh, no thanks. I would consider it a personal insult to my hospitality if you did not drink a toast to my dead son, Jaime. What's the matter with you, Doris? It smells like an excellent year. Mm. A bit presumptuous, but not too brash. Sort of fizzy. Tickles my nose. Oh, she is so cute. Come on, Doris. All right, but I've got a bad feeling. To those weary travelers who came so unexpectedly and brought with them such happiness for a tired old woman. You don't know what it means to me to have company. Me. A tired old woman with a dead son who is no longer alive. Well, I guess you don't get many people here. You build a little restaurant. You try to make a way for yourself and your lady years. And what happens? They move the flippin' highway. And in the name of progress. Merci beaucoup. Doris, you're embarrassing me. I've got a bad feeling, you said. You've got to learn to trust those instincts, honey. They look just like Jaime. How many pizza? If Auntie Nelda thinks we are paying for this work, she is very much mistaken. I don't think that's what she had in mind. Why are we tied up? Where's Tina? What is going on here? Let me put it to you gently. I think this is a trick. Not again. I can't stand it when people take advantage of my trusting nature. Well, it takes all kinds. There was something strange about Auntie Nelda, though. 
And my father told me never to eat in restaurants where the prices weren't on the menu. Well, it's too late for that now. Well, I hope they've come to their senses. My wrists are beginning to chafe. Tina. Boy, am I glad to see you. Don't be. She's in it with Auntie Nelda. Oh, we had so much in common. I'll always remember you, Lance. Here's looking at you, kid. What's gonna happen to us? Auntie wants to freeze dry you and use your body parts to feed her army of zombies. Well, at least we won't be wasted. I signed the organ donor card on the back of my driver's license. Can, can you just stand by and, and let her turn him in, into part of an army of zombies? Can you do that to the zombies? Basically, I'm not a very good person. Oh, <laughs> I don't believe that for a minute. It's true, though. I've lied and cheated and swindled and stolen, even killed people. Well, sure. Who doesn't have a few things in their past they'd rather forget? Mm, besides, I think they sort of add character. How can you do this? I don't know. Oh, I don't... I mean, Auntie Nelda, she'd be so mad if I'd let you go. Well, look at it this way. I saved you from the killer chickens. I helped you through the forest. I I tried to open up and relate to you as one human being to another. I gave you makeup tips. You owe me this. I've never done anything good before. It's not so bad. No, it's really easy once you get used to it. Why, there are times when I can't stop doing good things. Huh. It's like eating peanuts. So, Willie, for all your obvious incompetence, the Bula base was excellent. And the wine was immaculate. Gee, thanks, Doc. Your service, as usual, was atrocious. But the food was good. So, Tina, saying goodbye to Mr. Perfect, huh? If you think that you can get away with this, you are very much mistaken. On the contrary, I have gotten away with this. And as soon as my marginally intelligent assistant prepares the hardware, I'm going to turn you into crusty little fragments of your former selves. Taking advantage of people who are weaker than yourself is the mark of a bad person? It's me. I'm a real sicko. I suppose you could blame my parents, but I just can't stop doing nasty things. <laughs> It's like eating peanuts. There you are. Oh. Well, are you imbecile? What have you broken now? Can you believe the things I have to put up with? In many ways, I'm almost a saint. I should live with Jaime, God rest his soul. Uh, uh, doctor, uh, uh, are you really going to let this happen? Don't talk to me anymore. If you could just undo one hand. Well, we, we could say I did it myself. We, we could say a rat bit through it. We could say... Be quiet. Oh, all right. This may not save you, but it'll sure change things. Great idea. Cover us up, and we'll lie real still, and she won't even know we're here. Wait, it's dark. She's old. It could work. What is this? It's a transporter shroud. I'm not sure how it works. Transporter shroud. Doris, does this make any sense to you? Anything makes more sense than becoming part of an army of zombies. That's what my analyst says. Otto, you mustn't keep those feelings inside. You'll need to let them out. Anger can be a very healthy thing. And when I get angry, 
The thing I want to do most is destroy something. But Otto, I didn't do anything wrong. She did. Sweet Monique, you've been like a daughter to me. You've been with me for years, never complaining, always faithful. And this is how I repay your loyalty. Sometimes I'm disgusting even to myself. What's this, Tina? Bye bye, Monique. so good to get those pent-up anxieties out of the system. Uh, sorry to interrupt, big guy, but Lance Sterling approaches. To the changing coffin. To that old changing coffin. Now, where are we? Lance, don't ask me any questions. Don't explain anything to me. Don't say a word. <sighs> now let's try to find a way out of here. Doris, I... Now not... Not a word. Getting somewhere. Back to good old civilization for me. Lance. Lance, wait. Lance, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of money. More wealth than you can possibly imagine. But I like to think I'm the same unspoiled guy dandy I was before I inherited every dime. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not the only rich person in the world. There are other rich people. I know. I gave them their money. We have company. <laughs> Why don't I? <laughs> I'm Guy Dan. The Guy Dan. <laughs> the one you heard so much about. <laughs> Where are we? You with me? And what better opportunity to meet me? Guy Dandy the man, not just the legend. <laughs> How about a little drink? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, what we really need, Guy, is to use your phone. What you need, Frankie, is to get up against the wall and be real quiet. Why did you do it, Frankie? We was partners. You double-crossed. What made you think you could get away with it? It's happening again. Again. Now? <laughs> Sorry about that Senate seat, Lance. My dad bought me a seat. Me <laughs> think Me think where we sat down. Me think had the rain.
That was wonderful. Not only was it successful, it was ruthless and completely unnecessary. Wonder who? Prepare for the final collapse of the entire world. The final blasts from the gloom beam will obliterate the women and children from the planet. <laughs> and if we're lucky, we could hit a few innocent bystanders. left to give. Hey, let's go. <sighs> Made such a mess of things. I let everybody down. I acted like such a fool. You were right about everything. I just didn't pay any attention to you. Oh, pull yourself together. <laughs> hey, don't be so hard on yourself. So you're not perfect. Big deal. <laughs> sure. Nah, it's just like you, Doris. You're level-headed. Clear thinking, you know? You, you never give up. You're a grace under pressure. Personified. I hate to see you like this. <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> we're a team, you and me. Yeah. Yeah, just because we're in the bottom of this dark pit... Or we're gonna die a horrible death. Oh, and everybody's gonna say it was my fault that everything went wrong. And it Lance. was my fault that things went wrong. And we're gonna die this whole night. Oh. Get a grip on yourself. You hit me? I'm in the middle of a personal crisis and you hit me. It was for your own good. Pain is never for your own good, Miss Doris Tabbert. Yeah, sure. I made some mistakes. <laughs> sure, things could have gone better. But you didn't have to hit me. That's a bit unfair. I mean, uh, there are two of us. You can't hurt it. It's indestructible and completely immune to pain. Oh, uh, Doris, why don't you see if you can reason with me? Always been very, very good at mechanical stuff. Let's dance. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Doris. Well, it's just you and me. Come on. Fight like a man. Correction, Mr. Sterling. That leaves you and us. It's he who gambled with his brains and a, a gun. What? I did. It was he who had an eye but could not see. <laughs> it was he who had all and yet had none. <laughs> This is enough. 
thing I've ever heard. Stay back, ma'am. They'll have to come through me to get to you. My hero. Well, Miss Doris, your little display was very impressive. Futile, but impressive. The gloom beam is now locked on automatic. Nothing you can do. I win, you that every man must face. Now is the time. I must draw on the sum total of the things I've learned here on Earth. From my good breeding, my sense of style and color, excellent taste in wines. How do I decide? You can do it, Lance. We're counting on you. Make me proud, son. How do I make this final choice? Five. One potato. Two potato. Three potato. Four. Two. One. Zero. place I'll have some gas. You know, I bet it will. Sure. Just because the last 12 places we've been to have been out of gas for months doesn't mean that this place will be out. No, we mustn't get cynical as we get older. <laughs> Can we have a fill up? We ran out of gas down the highway. Hey, we got 
customers. What's wrong, buddy? Trouble under the hood? Well, the only trouble we have around here is we're out of gas. Where have you been? We ain't had any gas since the money went bad. No dinero, no petro. Comprendo? Let's go. I'm tired. Can we stay here? We better go. Okay. Thank you. Hey, girls. How about a song? If I were a carpenter and you, Doris Calvin and Tina Nelson's white place, you were lady. Bye-bye, y'all. Have a nice day. <laughs> know what I mean? ending what uh, what if under Ernest hat in all the other movies yeah you know i was actually thinking what if Ernest is really dr otto like well like Ernest is really just an alter ego or i mean another personality of dr otto throughout and the entirety of throughout the entire the series. series yeah 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 could be uh, I really liked it. I really liked the end. I mean, it was just, I, I liked that they actually didn't fix anything. Like, there's still no money, yeah. you know. He won. Yeah. Dr. Otto won. And, yeah. 
Now, to what end? I mean, I don't know why he's, you know, at the gas station and, you know. It's his was he waiting for the- Yeah, he's just, he won, you know, the, the world fell apart. Money is worthless. There's no, no gas. There's no anything else. So now right. he's just going to clearly go on to his next diabolical plan as any mad genius would. No money, no fossil fuels. I mean, that actually sounds like a great world to me, personally. You know, I mean, maybe maybe not with maybe not with no alternatives. Yeah, I, I was going to say, um, post-apocalyptic world scenario, I would be somebody's snack. I have no life skills. I, I would. Well, die. well, yeah, same. But uh, but I mean, as far as like, maybe if they brought you know brought out a barter, you know, everybody just used a barter system or something like that. Um, you know, or or if they or if they had actual well, this was the '90s, so there weren't any electric cars or anything like that. But or or if they were new of yeah, not for the public. Yeah, you know, yeah. So I mean, yeah, I guess in the '90s that would have sucked. But uh, yeah, I liked it. I mean, I thought it was pretty. I, I liked that all of the personalities came out to to attack oh, at the end. That the the last good. battle was a uh, super villain team up, and they were yeah. all the same villain. That was pretty yeah. nice. Yeah, uh, that's. I'm convinced now. I'm completely convinced that that Doctor Otto is actually in every Ernest movie. He is actually. Yeah. That's the case. It's just he it's never just takes off the hat. So yeah, he's, he's just say. Yeah. I mean, why not? He's got a hand underneath. Is this the the first and last appearance of Doctor Otto? Other than that, I mean, like, do they ever? Yes. Yeah, he, he, ever he never actually out? shows up in any other movie. No. Huh. Weird. It's an interesting character, you know. Oh yeah, but it's definitely on the creepier side of what he did later in his career. So I can kind of see yeah. them going, "We really like that guy at the end." Yeah, that's kind of funny. <laughs> you know, to me. That, that's like, it. Of all the characters, They're, that's what they ran with. Of all the characters to stick, yeah. you know, all of the, the ones that caught on the most was the was the dumb redneck, I guess. You know, well, that was his initial stick. So uh his first real well, okay. So his first big break was on the Johnny Cash and Friends TV show. Uh he did a couple other TV shows, and then in nineteen eighty, uh his first commercial appearance uh was as Ernest. Uh, uh it was a it was for the Dallas Cowboys True Leaders. So when he was a comedian, was he a character comedian? Like was he just like a was he like an a Larry the Cable guy type? No, or I, I think he was doing mostly like serious dramatic no, roles. No, but I mean, he started doing kidding. these commercials as a uh the Red Dead character artist. And then that's what sort of launched his career. Yeah, well, I mean I met with didn't you say he used to do stand-up? Oh yeah, apparently. Oh, uh what is what was his stand-up like? I didn't find anything yeah. on that, unfortunately. So well, I don't know what his you know methodology was, you know, what his shtick was about. But yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that was interesting. I wish more people knew about this. Everybody should spread the word about this movie because it's different. It's not really like a lot of other things. Uh, well, it kind of gives me. It's sort of reminiscent of like a Terry Gilliam movie with how like this the set pieces being so like intricate and like strange. You know what I right. mean? Like there and there's I sort of like that. a there's sort of like a, a like um I don't know kind of hard to explain it's sort of like the it's like the set pieces are alive almost and it's like yeah, it's it's almost uh stop motion animation just, just some of the stuff in the background yeah and then with the uh 2d lightning effects and all that kind of stuff it, yeah. it really has a it's a low class aesthetic but it really works for this movie i agree yeah i totally agree it it's i don't know it, it, yeah i i think anytime that you have something that like it, it, it sort of raises more questions like why is this like that you know it's it's like kind of immersive you're kind of like because there's got to be a purpose for these things being a certain way even though they're they're not really that there might not really be you know it's just because it flashes or because it makes a weird noise or because you know whatever but like you have to think like these places that the, the these different um areas that they encounter the different personalities like they have like that's their home it's like they've lived there all along and so it, it feels very lived in it feels like well, very it's sort established. Of not, it doesn't just warp his body it also seems to create like a individual sort of a reality for them in which they yeah. live and exist yeah exactly because like you know 
you're, you're wondering like, well, does Auntie Nelda really have a dead son? You know, like, because really she keeps talking she about her, You know, yeah. yeah. I mean, she's yeah. legitimately upset about her son. You know, Hive. Does she have a real restaurant? Is that a real restaurant or is that just a trick? You know, it's like it just raises. It definitely had a some... kitchen full of, uh, you know, used pots and pans and everything else. Right. So even if it hasn't been a restaurant, clearly somebody's been living there in some capacity. Right. Yeah. And in theory, this, that person is her. Yeah. It, it 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 has like there's an ambiguity about it that's like intriguing. It's not frustrating in some ways, like when things are ambiguous, where like. A movie might have an ambiguous ending, and you're like, okay, well, it's so open ended, you don't know. But it's more like these are just these auxiliary characters, like it raises questions about them and it makes them more intriguing and it makes them more interesting, even if it's just a gag or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, I noticed that the, the only character that he played that wasn't like a normal Ernest character was like the rich guy. Who was my least favorite out of all those anyway? Have you seen the pirate? Oh yeah, or the, oh, yeah, or the yeah, pirate. Yeah, I remember guy. those. Yeah, right, so I yeah. didn't see the uh there was you didn't have the barbarian, the Ottoman guy. The guy who's always gone about the Ottomans. So that's yeah. that's a regular Ernest one. You didn't have the um oh, Julius Caesar one. kind of guy. You didn't have the Julius Caesar kind of guy. Uh but for the most part, yeah, you saw you know, some of the basic ones. Yeah. Kind of cool. But, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. And sort of, um, again, you have a movie where we, I feel like we talk about very frequently movies where a character or one actor plays like multiple characters. We've, we've like mentioned like, um, we you know, that we wanted to see that, not that we have yeah. seen that. And now it actually yeah. has happened. Yeah. Yes. But, you know, because we obviously can't show the naughty professor or anything like that. No. You know, um, but th this kind of is that type of movie in a way. Although, I mean, this is kind of a sci fi comedy. Uh, I don't know, but but it's almost like phantasmagorial in a way. Some of the the way, like the way that things things are sort of dreamlike, especially when you're looking at um the doctor's lair. It's very almost mad god esque. You know what I mean? Like just the way that oh it, yeah yeah I could see that yeah. just the the aesthetics of it all, the outside of it. What well, is um, that uh, sort of castle Grayskull sort of thing on the outside, yeah. and then very pulp science fiction on the inside you know with lights and dials and things that don't serve an obvious function but again yeah. other than being lights and dials right but that, I feel like that's, the, that's the point of mad science that's one of the things i love most about like mad scientist characters is that their methods make no sense at all at, like they don't have to. regular it makes yeah, sense the to them and that's exactly. all they need that is the that is all the validation they need Exactly. It, that, it's, it's, I have destroyed me, the world, and what next? I guess I'm going to go work at a gas station? Yeah, well, to me, like, a mad scientist is, is not just a guy who is smart and has henchmen. It, it's more like, to me, it's more of a character who can manipulate reality, but they don't really realize it, necessarily. Um, it, it's, they, and also, they, they're mad. Exactly. <laughs> they don't madness. have to have rational explanations for what exactly. they're doing. Well, yeah, their they're madness doesn't really require a method actually no, it, it, it completely just, excludes that or precludes that exactly to them it's just the it's more mind over matter it's like they might pick up uh you know a, a piece of metal that's attached to a hose that's attached to a vacuum cleaner on their back and it's full of some sort of dirty lick you know dirty water whatever but in their mind like well i've added this and this so th now i have a flamethrower you know what i mean it's yeah. like it's and whereas if another character picked up the same you know device off of the if they took it from the mad scientist it wouldn't work it, it's right. it's uh i like that idea i like characters that it are requires like, a uh, scientific suspension of disbelief yes exactly yeah. yeah and to me those are the characters that are the most powerful of all and it makes sense that dr otto won actually oh, you yeah. know well especially going up against lance yeah yeah uh, dorses is kind of badass but uh lance was a terrible terrible human being yeah so terrible. i like doris a lot I, well i like though that, that he did have a moment though where he kind of he tried to he realized that you know that he would that he was a fool and everything but then he kind of snapped out of it when yeah. doris slapped him yeah he he's, such a base, he's such a big baby that yeah you know he almost reaches catharsis and fails yeah yeah because he's like you know doris you're so level-headed and you know 
you'd always know what to do and you never give up. And then he's like, oh, you slapped me. Yeah. Because he's a delicate flower. Because because he is, in fact, the damsel in this movie. Very much so. Not even the anti-hero. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is the one in distress. Yeah, absolutely. He, I mean, I really don't like his character, but then you also have, you have to have a character that's sort of pathetic that no one else really likes. You know what I mean? I mean, well, like, he's the opposite. Well, he has to be the opposite of Dr. Otto. I mean, that's right. clearly what he's designed for. Right. Well, it's one of those things where, like, you have a character who is the main character, but they're somehow, they're somehow the least, they're somehow the least interesting. Uh, it, it's sort of like with Seinfeld. I feel like it's the same way with Seinfeld. It's that, I mean, maybe, it, except for in Seinfeld, it's not purposeful. Jerry, in my opinion, is the least interesting and least funny character, which is ironic because he's a comedian. Um, and it's his show. Yeah, and it's his show. But to me, he is by far the Lance of the show because every other character has so much more, is more intriguing, has more um, character, and, and, and there, there's just more to them. I mean, what? You have Jerry. He's a comedian, uh, and he's very particular about things, and that's his character. And that's it. That's pretty much it. Um. Whereas then you have a character like George or Kramer or Elaine who they have so many different idiosyncrasies that make them uh, more entertaining. And even though they're horrible people, I mean, maybe some of their aspects like are things that people can relate to. Whereas like Jerry's not really that relatable. I mean, unless you're just kind of a boring person, I guess. In my opinion, anyway, I'm sure there, I'm sure there are tons of people who love Jerry, but. No, actually there's a recurring joke about Jerry at work right now. So, oh really? Yeah. Do you have a Jerry at work? Is there someone that ever we? Was? Well, we've yeah. There we had somebody who who left who was called a Jerry by somebody else, and they don't like the comparison. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, that's neither here nor there. But I just like the fact that all of the qualities that made Lance successful. I mean, he had the proper breeding, and he got the encyclopedias as a kid, and he had the yeah. loving parents, and he wanted to grow up to be a senator. Whereas Dr. Otto, you know, started out in a sack and he blew up his parents because they sucked and, you know, everything else. And he succeeded. Right. Just the dichotomy between that. It was kind of interesting. It is. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting for sure. It's almost like, like good what, lost, like legitimately lost to evil in this movie. Right. And I love that he... he I mean, I love the right and wrong button. That's that was an excellent right, choice. The right you know? decision or the wrong decision. My entire <laughs> life has led me up to this moment. <laughs> and did he make the right choice though? Because after that, everything blew up. So clearly, he failed. Yeah, let's he see. Made to me, the I wrong decision that, by pressing the right button. Yeah, I think that that was the, yeah correct. The right. doctor's plan all along is like to make this. He is essentially making this idiot proof. You know, by being like, okay, well, I'm going to trick him. I'm going to actually mix up. The, you know what I mean? Like, well, no, no. I think he was making a point. He spent his entire oh, life or, making yeah. all the right decisions, and he yeah, failed. True. Whereas the doctor that's spent true. his entire life making all the wrong decisions, and he succeeded. <laughs> he made it very black and white or red and green. You well, had you know two what? choices actually, you could make. Oh my god! I just realized this. I and this was actually I was going to tie this into the, the my final thought about about the movie but uh it's very basic it's a very basic thing but i think it's also the whole point of the, the movie in general um auntie nelda said it to doris you know she's like you were right all you know you just when everybody gets drugged by the wine and she's like you know i gotta i gotta admit you were right you know and then she turns to her and she says you really got to learn to listen to your instincts honey and i think that that's the whole point of the movie yeah. That's actually the whole point of the movie because the doctor, like you said, did the wrong thing his whole life oh, yeah. and he succeeded, but he followed his instincts the entire time. Yeah. And I think, and so in a way, he's weirdly the hero, in my opinion. Um, I mean, oh, like, yeah. because no, I mean, was definitely he, not even an anti hero, he was yeah. the villain of this because he, he was so trying to, quickly. he was trying to prop up the establishment. That was his entire point. Exactly. He was sent out to make the system not fail and you know the system exactly. is in all these movies is you know the enemy which i don't yeah. always disagree with 
yeah. I almost never disagree with that. I don't. Yeah, I don't really disagree with it in this no, case I, either. I, I, and this, this is weirdly a very, weirdly kind of a punk movie in a way, you know. Um, yeah, I love that, and that, I, it's really just as basic as that. It's, it's just like that's the in my eyes that's the whole point of the movie is just the trust your instincts, you know. And but then again, some people are stupid and have terrible instincts and should not be encouraged to. And they will be instinct, chopped so. up and fed to zombies. The movie yeah, also addresses true. that. That's true. I, I kind of wish we could have seen some zombies, but then again, maybe it wasn't really necessary because everybody knows what a zombie looks like. You know, it's not really necessary to see a it zombie. It wouldn't advance you know. the plot. Yeah. yeah, you've seen one, you've seen them all, you know. Yes, or that. I, I like that idea. Oh, I wonder if there's like a Jim Barney fan club. I, I bet there's like there's like one person who just really loved Jim Barney and has like all kinds of like Ernest. I wonder if there's like Ernest. Was there ever an Ernest doll? Probably. I feel like we should like get some Ernest stuff and like have Listen, it. A if there's not a fan club, club, there needs to be one with a secret handshake. Yes. <laughs> Just get really close to each other. Yeah, and you have to like shake each other's heads. Fingers. Yeah. <laughs> that needs to be a thing. I feel like I would be very upset if I saw two people doing that in public. <laughs> well, it would be, no, no, see, it would be four people. Oh my God. I'm yeah, so You'd have to have the one on the back yeah. doing the head thing, then they'd have to like <laughs> write each other like centaurs and like do the, oh do the, the handshake thing. See? Oh my god, I actually love it. When when we finally get to see each other in person, we should do that. <laughs> people will people will just be really disgusted and weirded out. That's a, that's a, that's a random stranger to jump onto my back. All right, it, it'll be <laughs> fine. Don't worry about it. It's a bit. You're not gonna understand it. I just need you to leap onto my back and put your hand right here. And then that'll be the that'll be the end credits for one of our episodes. It'll just be like us doing that and maybe making we need some kind of like chant or we weird charge noise. across a field while doing that yes yes yeah i love it <laughs> so speaking of end credits what are we ending this thing on well it was gonna be uh you know the thing about trusting your instincts but i think that um you know like i said trust your trust learn to trust your instincts honey unless you're a moron in which case your instincts are terrible and you should be protected from your feelings and thoughts at all costs. The end. No, I don't like that. No, no, <laughs> no. Stupid should not be protected. Um, I, I mean, let's just like an island you could drop them off on and they'll be protected like an endangered species. Yes, like, a, like pandas that don't want to increase their population. Yeah, right. you should be I would be fine with that. Yeah. You should be ashamed of yourself. You should yes. be tagged and thrown yes. on an island yes. to live in your own filth for the rest of your yes. days. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, so yeah, trust your instincts unless your instincts are less than that of a panda who can't manage to reproduce, in which case exactly. don't trust your instincts. Oh, yeah, all right, case, I'm good with that now. All right, all right. In which case you need to live the rest of your days on idiot island with all the other idiots Yes. eating rocks and shells. Yes. And with that, I've been and Condor. And I am Crow, and this was Dr. Otto and the Riddle of the Gloom Bean. <laughs> one more time. Is this on? The red light's on. I mean, it's on, right? This is on. Okay. Oh, one, and two, and three. Gonder man, gonder man, dolls wear a gonder can. See him fly through the sky where he lands, evil dies. Hell yeah! Lasers from his beak. Hell yeah! Here comes Connor Man. From his secret Connor Cave. Terrible movies will he brave. He's gonna say lots of words. He's gonna ask man just up like a bird. Hell yeah! Here comes Connor Man. You know what I heard? Connor once punched man so hard he flew back in time so he could learn the error of his ways. And he could, uh, fart tornadoes. That's right. Connor once watched the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Yeah, you know the drug strippy one? And he liked it. Yeah, that's the kind of guy.
values. And uh, hell yeah! Here comes Connor, man. 